call the meeting to order at 601. Are there first on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Judy? Uh, yes, if we could add as number eight to approve the hiring of Stacy Ferryman as the assistant finance director, and then all other numbers below that will just change by one. Okay. All right, and Eric couldn't be with us tonight, but we're gonna do our best to go ahead without him. Um, next, approve the minutes. The minutes of August 15th, 2022. Make a motion we approve them. I have a motion by Brian or a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? The only thing I would add is, I don't, I don't know if it needs to be changed, but when we talked about the former gas station, that um, I think, well, I know I agreed to spend that money to avoid there being a Morristown pit going into the future, mm -hmm. that that's a property that needs to be fixed up. Yeah. So you just wanted to reflect to say that? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Is there any other changes or additions here? I have a change with Judy. You know the October meeting, October 26th of the ideal workshop. Do you know any times on that? Is that virtual? I don't have them yet, but I'll get issues okay. if I can. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are passed unanimously. <clears throat> Next, we have liquor control tonight, Sarah. Very good. We'll move to new business. First is the introduction of Scott Johnstone from the Morrisville Village Manager. Welcome. Thank you. I just wanted to stop in and say hello briefly. I know you've got a busy agenda. I am Scott Johnston, the new manager at, in the village and for Morrisville Water and Light. And you know, it's just a little bit about, about me. I always believe relationships happen when we know something about each other. So um, I'm a civil engineer by training. Uh, certified as a professional engineer, but really I've spent my whole career just running organizations, starting out in public um, public works management, so I know something about your roads, and I've run utilities across New Hampshire and Vermont, and on a whole bunch of other organizational stuff as well. So I'm just so thrilled to kind of have a chance to come here to Morrisville, Morristown, and, and work with you all. Um, just celebrated my 40th wedding anniversary, which is just an amazing. I can't believe anybody could put up with me that long. So <laughs> Marcy's just a wonder. I have two fully grown men and two wonderful grandbabies. Any of you that haven't had grandbabies, holy cow, there's nothing better than that in the world. So that's a little bit about me. Just quickly, um, really, again, thrilled to have joined the village in Morrisville, Water and Light. Um, any place that's been around for 127 years, uh, providing exemplary service has a lot of good to say. And I think that both inspires the, the pride and the accomplishments that have, has happened, but we'll make sure that a new person walking in like me comes in with a little bit of humility because you're standing on a lot of past shoulders. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of incredible good that's been, been done in the village and in this town. And we have a lot to build upon. And that, when you have such a great team as we have uh, in the village, that also lets you kind of get ready for anything that might be coming at you in the future. And then the team has done a really exemplary job of beginning to plan for that future. So uh, really just nothing good but good to say. I thought I'd offer a couple words of just fresh eyes looking at what's going on in the village. Uh, we run three utilities, as you know. It's really uh, wonderful to see that our water utility meets all of the water quality requirements. We don't have any PFAS in our wells, so we avoid that whole drama that's sweeping our state. Uh, so we have a strong, uh, both water quality and water supply system and are continually, continually like always upgrading water pipes and all of that sort of stuff. So that utility is in really good shape. The wastewater system runs at around 53 to 57% of its various capacities. And we have to start thinking about future stuff to hit around 80. Um, so we're in really good shape there. There have been some hard uh, discussions in the past to kind of particularly address BOD. We're still working on that, biochemical oxygen demand. Um, and frankly, the, the participants in that, um, I've met with all of them and they're just doing really great work, building a good, strong economy, employing people. And yeah, they happen to produce something that is higher strength on our wastewater system. So my approach is to work with people like that and try to help them succeed and help our community succeed. And 
uh, so far, I'd say everybody has been incredibly willing and, and warm to that sort of approach. Our electric system operates uh, wonderfully well. We have very few outages. We meet all of our quality requirements. Um, we will have challenges in the future, in the long future around our electric system. Nothing to do with growth locally. We, our wires are at about 50% capacity most times these days. Um, but really, as we look over the next 10, 15 years and look at the state policies around moving to 100% renewables, or that's where it will land, and electrifying heating, electrifying hot water, electrifying transportation, that will be rebuilding and upgrading the whole system over time to, to, just to serve um, both what's here today and what will be here tomorrow. It's really how much more will be in all of our houses. When I was a kid, lots of houses had 50 or 60 amp services, and then we went to 100 amp services to meet the need. Today, 200 amp service is standard. The house of tomorrow is gonna have a 400 amp service in it. Um, so that means bigger transformers, it means bigger switches, it means bigger everything. But we've got 10 or 15 years to thoughtfully work from where we are today to where we need to be to meet that future need. And that will set Morrisville, Morristown up for an incredibly prosperous future. Uh, we'll be all renewable, we'll be able to control our systems, um, and we'll have abundant renewable energy uh, at a, with a lower energy bill um, in the future, in 10 or 15 years from now. It'd be tumultuous going through that transition, um, but that's where this future ends up, ends up for us all. So that's an exciting um, opportunity for us all to think about there. I really wanted to come here today, though, to start this relationship because I, as I, my first job in public service was in Conway, New Hampshire. I was town engineer, public works director. There are six villages in, in the town of Conway, New Hampshire. So I get this town village thing, and now I'm on the opposite side that I was in 1986. Um, and, and really the only way that model works, it is an incredible model um, when you have extra people looking at specific services. It only works when the town and the village, or villages in Conway's case, uh, are really thoughtful and collaborative and are airing out anything that needs to get aired out, planning together, and just being in constant discussion and dialogue and so that's my commitment to you on the village side. I want to be fully engaged with you all. You've got an incredible ombudsman and leader in Eric. Um, I've already met with him a lot. And so, you know, there's every reason, there's been a good relationship between the two and there's no reason it shouldn't do anything but strengthen. So I think that's how we'll find collective success as we move forward, making sure that the village and the town are on the same page and working closely together. When you, I think it's also true that you know, I view running the three utilities we run as, you know, really the utility isn't the end of the game, right? That's not the purpose of having the utility. The utilities are there to serve the people, businesses, and environment in which we all live, work, and play. Um, that's the approach I take. So collaborating with the business community, community groups, any individuals that want to talk, you know, that want to have voice, I just think that's vital. That's how we do our best job in a democracy is when we're all engaged. So. As I'm new to this area, if there's people you think I should be meeting with or groups or business groups or whoever it is, man, I'm all in. I'll, I'll, I'll be there and, and we'll get dialogues going. It doesn't mean everyone gets their way in democracy, but everyone's voice ought to be heard, in my view. And that's how, that's the approach I'll certainly bring just from my own personal uh, perspective of how good government works and uh, the type of view I'd like to take in shaping the next steps, of course, with the trustees as we move forward with the utilities. So. Looking forward to that. It doesn't mean that that collaborative approach doesn't mean we can't address hard things um, and we can do it in a non-personal attack way and just have good, hard, open conversations and make a decision move on. That's what democracy is, right? We've had our share. We've had the biochemical oxygen demand issue I talked about. We're still struggling with relationship, uh, you know, and, and the future of Green River Reservoir. Those are just tasks to accomplish. Like we'll get through those um, and we can get through them as a stronger community. Um, and one thing I'd ask of you, if, if you ever start hearing me personalize any of those issues, uh, I'll, I've said the same with the trustees, like call me on the carpet for because that's not the way that we should be having these conversations. Uh, I presume everybody comes at issues with good intentions and really with the interests of our community at heart. And so if I cross the line, call me right on the carpet, please. Because um, I don't think that's how we get at good decisions um, in doing our work. So um, really, you know, 
I think that's really, I've covered most of what I wanted to cover. And because uh, again, I see this as the beginning of a relationship. I'm happy to meet with any of you one-on-one -on -one as well at any point. And really, if there's any kind of questions you have about things going on at the village, I'm happy to answer them now or later, whatever works for you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Well, I, I guess I'd say from the board, we welcome you. Thank you. And um, I really like the sound of your approach and your the ideas of planning together and a collaborative effort. You know, that's a really important thing with the village and town. And um, as we have witnessed from years past, many years ago, that, that wasn't always the case. But for the past dozen years or so, we've worked very well together. So we haven't done things like, you know, paved road and then have you tear it up the next week or that sort of thing. You know, we bought an excavator with, with your folks at one point, we buy culverts and things like that. And I just, it's exciting to hear your attitude because it's just exactly what we need to do. We need to work together. Maybe we won't see eye to eye on everything, but I, I like your approach and, um, you know, detach the personal side of it. We're gonna get the business done. Sure. And um, I, I, I'm really psyched to meet you. It's, uh, it Great. sounds really, really good. I don't know if you've met everyone. I know the name placards aren't here, but my far, left, my far right is Dom McDowell. And right here on the right is Judy. Judy and I had an interesting okay. evening together. And we have Jess Graham <laughs> on my left and Brian Kellogg. Hi, Brian. And I'm Bob Beeman. So we welcome you tonight. Oh, thank you, Judy. If, uh, Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> but um, I don't know if the board wants to, wants to say anything to Scott. But I, just, I, I had a conversation with you on this. And I know you mentioned it in your introduction. And if you just could reiterate that the, uh, the development going on is not going it's not going to impact our electricity grid nor our sewer setup yeah so all three utilities are, have adequate capacities for the type of current growth that's going on everything has its limits if it goes on for decades you know um, we'll we'll run into challenges the challenges on the electric grid are going to have everything to do with change of policy from a climate renewables not it's not really being driven by local growth so well, I definitely hear that discussion around worry about growth, and mm -hmm. you know, as as people have called me to say, can our can this utility handle can that? I kind of constantly said the same thing, which is yes. Um, you're you're raising a, a harder question than can a utility work. You're really asking a question about what should the character of our community be, um, and that is one of those really hard, difficult, can devolve into very personal, um, uh, hard feelings. Um, but honestly, those, that's the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. I can just tell you, at least as, it's, as we sit today, our utilities are well poised to, to fulfill the obligations of our yeah, yeah, I probably get uh, two emails a week and maybe a call every other week about, you know, all the development that's happening and yep. everyone's saying, you know, can our septic system even handle it? Can the sewer plant handle it? And I always reassure them because I know a little bit about it too. I, I helped the uh, trustees when they were going through the whole BOD issue with the, the, uh, the heavy users, you know, and I try to assure them, but I always direct them to call, contact you folks yep. because you've got more of the nitty gritty in the description of, of what the capacity is. And as I understand it, you have the ability to add on another chamber or, or two chambers, is that correct? That's right, there's more room there. There's there's actually the plant was the wastewater plant was even designed for an extra hundred thousand gallons of capacity. Um, we just need to make some modest tweaks to uh, further address phosphorus at the time. So the next hundred thousand is is really simple, um, and then after that we have room on on site to continue to do more. Um, you know our bonds on that expire around twenty thirty five. I don't see us needing to take any significant. You know, we might do that phosphorus upgrade, but. I, you know, you usually do an upgrade of a wastewater treatment plant every 20 to 25 years. That's kind of been the history. The pumps get tired, you know, the systems get tired. And I think that's probably about what we're looking at, um, you know, with the kind of pace that we're on. So we should be in good shape there. That's great. Any other questions? Just, just a, I, I don't mean to belabor this too much, but sort of picking up on what Judy said. In terms of electricity, um, you know, you talk specifically about 10 to 15 years out from now, we're going to see some big changes and you feel pretty comfortable about meeting those changes. Yep. What about for the next five to 10 years? Are we, are we in good shape there capacity-wise? 
Yeah, we're in good shape capacity wise. We've got some uh, we've got some work to do on, on some maintenance issues for sure. Um, you know, we've got to get caught up on doing pole replacements on vegetative maintenance. You know, one of the weird things with the, the fact that it's warmer out is stuff grows faster. We all see that on our own lodge, right? The same is true underneath the poles and wires. Mm -hmm. And so you not only do we have to get caught up on the pace we should have been doing, we got to even go faster. Um, you've got to be upgrading transformers. Like as people are bringing home, every time somebody brings home an electric vehicle, which isn't happening a lot yet, but as it starts to happen, you're adding an old fashioned dryer in your garage. So if you bring two of those home, you've added two old fashioned dryers. Just we all know what an old fashioned dryer is. It's a really big, thick wire, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what we're beginning to add to the system. So even those little drop transformers aren't big enough anymore. Right? So it's that sort of upgrade. We need more switches in our our switch yards, you know, it's, it, but that's all normal kind of upgrade and maintenance being driven kind of one project at a time. And, and when we do new projects, of course, the, the developer pays for those sort of upgrades related to the project. So, yeah, I, I just had a conversation with a commercial electrician who was telling me he's installing 50 amp services and 100 amp services all the time for electric vehicles. Yeah, and that does change the demand for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah those vehicles, the, the home chargers are. It can yeah, run on, they, they can ch run on 110 amps, uh, uh, 110 volts, but you're not going anywhere very quick in the morning. Right. So typically at home, we're putting in like 240 volt services to those, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, so it's like a big, the old fashioned dryer. Um, mm -hmm. And really big chargers, like you see on the interstates for the Tesla, so it's like right. 480 volts. Yeah. Just to mm -hmm. put it in perspective. So that's, that's what's going to be coming at us on the electric side and why I say, We've got a little time to get ready for that, but we got to be at, you'll see us talk much more about investment on the electric side, really related to those policy shifts around climate, renewable energy, and electrification. That's what's going to drive the electric side. Great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, you, thank you all. Have a good meeting. Appreciate it. Okay, so, can I, sorry, can I ask you sure. more question? Um, of course. So in terms of like the, like the planning and visioning process, is that something that's just ongoing and happening? And like, um, like in terms of, um, what the transformers look like. Does that just mean like big poles, big poles in certain places? Um, and then does it also mean that um, the sourcing of the electricity will be more from solar um, and will those sources be local or yeah. those are a lot of questions. Yeah, so some of, some of the changes will happen kind of organically, like the mm -hmm. upsizing of transformers. You yeah. know, our team knows what needs, what the next size is that a, right. a consumer will need as they upgrade equipment. So that's just kind of happening day to day. And that goes, that's just on the fall. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the where's the power coming from? And we, we have obligations to meet higher levels of renewability by right. state statute already. Um, the trustees will be talking tomorrow night about um, making an additional wind purchase from Western New York um, to increase our renewable, re renewability, frankly, at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're continuing to build out that portfolio. Of course, a lot of solar is continuing to be added here. Mm -hmm. This is where what happens with that, the future of the dams matters a lot, because mm -hmm. um, that's all the whole um, no, 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 fairly low cost power. Mm -hmm. The broader visioning piece in, on the electric side happens in a document called an integrated resource plan, mm -hmm. which is kind of our version of a town plan, if you will, for the okay. electric system, which mm -hmm. is required by state law every three years. And we're just starting that, it's due in February. Mm -hmm. So we'll be um, doing lots of visioning about what the world of electricity could look like mm -hmm. in 20 years. Right. And then figuring out what it is we need to do in the next three years mm -hmm. um, to make sure we're gonna be on progress for that. Mm -hmm. And we're planning, I've had some conversations with Eric and Todd about you know, where should we um, come uh, in the town process for that. So probably mm -hmm. the planning commission mm -hmm. get some inputs from, uh, from the town on the integrated mm -hmm. resource plan. Mm -hmm. Again, to make sure we're collaborating and both voices are heard. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you very much. And that'll be available publicly. Once yep. it's, yeah. Great. A absolutely. And we'll have some opportunity for the public to engage with us on that as well. Okay. And how do people find out about that? Um, it, we'll be putting information about that on our website. It's not okay. there yet, yeah. but we'll be using our website for that. Okay. And they can always contact me as well or just call the office. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Nice Great. to meet you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, <clears throat> next, number two, coin drop for a VFW auxiliary. That's your Becky, right? Mm -hmm. I understand. 
Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So we're looking for a permit. I'm the senior vice president of the Artillery here in Uh We're looking for a permit uh, to do a coin drop on October 8th from 11 to 3. Um, our committee chairman, uh, Martha Buther, has spoken to the police department. Um, they didn't have any issues with it. Um, and we are raising money for the Lifeline Medical Alert Services. We provide 100% of the cost uh, for about 50 uh, residents in Low County, um, veterans or um, their families, um, so that they can stay at home. So we're looking for a permit to do the point job. Um, Brooklyn Street and the uh, Any comments to that? I make a motion to approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Judy. Jason, yeah, I wasn't aware of that, Bob. I'm not sure who was spoken with the DD. Okay, I was going to ask you. You spoke to the Mars, yes, for that location. Um, I'm not sure if my head spoken to them or not, but I think. Yeah, I actually um, did. I was going to have a comment. I did speak to one of the Demars, and they were concerned about that location um, because of the, you know, their property there. And um, just it's a tight spot. They, of course, they run their lacing coin drop there, but they also felt they would be confusing, that it might be, might confuse people that that also the same thing. And I didn't know if uh, there could be a different spot that there could be like in front of the fire department even, or some, I, I don't know, an al uh, alternative spot. I don't know where that would be, but they were concerned. Denny. You can have it for the firehouse. Nancy's already going to explain. That's what I thought. I thought other groups have been there. Okay. Would that be okay? Um, I think that that would be fine. Okay, because I think that would that would appease the Demar's family. And I'm not sure who Martha talked to at the police department, but she would have to spoke to somebody. Does that sound good? Motion. Yeah, we can amend the motion. Yeah, we'll have signs that um, indicate that it's for the yeah, right. Victim. Right. Sounds sounds like in front of the fire department. Yeah. Is that what you said in your motion? Yes, so You're right. amended. And your second is yes. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Um, favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Next, number three, accept Nathan Wolf's resignation from the police department. Make a motion to approve it with a thank you. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? Any comment, Nathan? Or about Nathan? Uh, no, he uh, left law enforcement field for another line of work. And he uh, thanked everybody and he appreciated his time working. Great. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a thank you note. Go ahead. All right, any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, number four, approve the hiring of Samuel Johnston as a part time EMT. Bill, you want to comment on that? Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, Sam Johnston is a uh, long time advanced life support provider. Sorry, sorry Bill, um, can you come at least stand up so people can hear you? Yeah, we're trying to get, get okay. the microphones out to the people in uh, okay. yeah. video land. Just okay. Can you come, can you yeah. come forward to? I, I was, I got a face made for radio. You're, you look great. You, no one can see, you, no, still no one can see you. Um, Thank so, you. Uh, so Sam Johnston is a uh, longtime ALS provider, currently a Vermont licensed, uh, nationally registered paramedic. Uh, uh, we completed the interview process with him. We'd like to bring him on uh, for the 24-29 uh, hour part-time position. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I'll make a motion to hire Samuel Johnson in the EMS department as a part-time EMT at a rate of $21.93 per hour with the start date of August 30th, 2022. All right, I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. And number five. Approved at Jacob Boyer as a volunteer EMS. 
Uh, Jacob is a newly certified Vermont first responder, uh, lives in a high park, and he's working over the day with us uh, to, uh, to do his uh, uh, EMS affiliation and uh, be a volunteer with the organization. I'll make a motion to add Jacob Boyer to the volunteer EMS roster. Second. second. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank Very you. good. <laughs> and I, I neglected to, to tell people, please, if you're going to speak tonight, please stand up and, and come to the mic, but not right up to it. Stand on that piece of black tape on the floor. And um, we're just trying to get it so people out there on Zoom or listening on, on YouTube can hear the meetings going on. and. I know I've, I've struggled myself trying to tune in remotely and it's difficult to hear everybody's voices and also know who it is. So definitely if you can introduce yourself and um, please speak loud and clear because it is challenging. We're, we're working on, we've been working on our audio visual, you know, slowly, but um, hopefully we'll have it. So it works a lot better than it has in the past. So thank you. Number six, approve Christopher Tatro as a full-time police officer. Jason, you want to comment on that? Sure. Chris's probationary period is, is up, so more of a procedure part. I'm just uh, looking to put him on, uh, appoint him for a full-time police officer. Sounds good. Do I hear a motion regarding it? I'll make a motion to make Christopher Tatro a permanent full-time police officer. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Number seven, approve the hiring of Todd Baxter as a full-time detective lieutenant. <laughs> Want to comment on him, Jason? Sure. Todd uh, comes to us after uh, a 20-year career with Vermont State Police. He started off as a road trooper working out of the Lamoille Outpost, which was at that point was at the Morristown PD. And from there, he went on to investigative work, spent the majority of his career doing investigations, ranging from narcotics uh, to most recently homicides. He's got an extensive amount of investigative experience as well as an extensive amount of supervisory management experience, which makes him uh, a good fit for this position. Yeah, I know Todd well, and we're very, very lucky to get him. Yeah, no, he's, a, he's a good worker, and I think he's in it very well. That's great. So do I hear a motion regarding Todd? I make a motion to hire Todd Baxter in the police department as a full-time detective lieutenant at a rate of $46.69 per hour. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I just want to add, um, Jason and Eric asked me to be part of that interview process um, in the hiring of Todd. And I just want to echo what Jason said. I was very impressed with him. I think the town is very lucky mm -hmm. to get this individual. It sounds like he was uh, being recruited by several other towns. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm also happy to see that we're hiring people in the police department who have a few years under their belt. Not necessarily also in police work, but just as a mature person. I appreciate that. I agree. The brain has been <coughs> hopefully fully fused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. So the number eight, Judy added, hiring of assistant finance director. Tina, do you want to handle that? Sure. Um, we interviewed a couple of very good candidates. Um, we settled on Stacy Fairman. She worked for many, many years at, at Parker and Stearns. She has a very extensive financial background and she is very well versed in dealing with a very, very busy office and a lot of different um, skills she brings and she's gonna be very good, so. That's great. Thanks. Do I hear a motion regarding that? I'll make a motion to hire Stacy Ferriman in the finance department as a full-time assistant finance director at a rate of $25.06 per hour with a start date of September 19th, 2022. I have a motion by Don, do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Jess. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. 
All right, number 8B, <laughs> sign errors and omission certificate. Is that you, Sarah? No. That, it's the listers. I don't know if Dwayne wants to speak to it, but Terry told Dwayne? me what it was. I'm Dwayne Sprague, the lister, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I can tell you what they are. The first one is on uh, Golf Course Road. Mm -hmm. That was a... Um, item that was set aside and brought back to light uh, through a permit. So um, it was missed in the beginning, but it was there to be picked up. So that's an add-on of the 88,300. 8, okay. Comcast was a, uh, a personal property that shouldn't have been injured as personal properties were eliminated a couple years ago. And that's a deduction of $11,325. And then the third one is the Mobile home up to um, the mobile home park, Pinecrest, valued of 6,900. The state has turned it over, it's abandoned, has been, and they've turned it over to the park and there really is no value there. So uh, we're taking that one off. Okay. So those are the three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dwayne. Thanks. Do I hear a motion regarding these? Make a motion and we accept the errors and omissions that have been brought forth to us. Do I need more? No, that's good. As presented. I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Now, discuss delinquent tax policy. That would be you, Sarah. I'll need a pen. So um, you have a copy of my proposed uh, revised delinquent tax collector pro um, policy. Not much is really changing um, in it. It's cleaning up language and VLCT has come up with um, a new model policy. So um, it's time to start the delinquent tax sale process. So I figured it was a good time to review the policy and see what VLCT was advising. Um, and there's been some new laws, so, so there was some additional language to add on, but the policy itself and how we handle things is not, not changing. It's more statutory language. I made a motion that we accept it. I have a motion by Brian, is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? Yeah, I've got a question. So I was reading through this and the very beginning of this it says as soon as the warrant has been received. When would that typically happen? Yeah, so um, it was removed. There was another line that I had in the old one. So basically, um, Sarah Haskins as um, town treasurer on May 15th, well, May 16th, first thing in the morning. Um, I sign a warrant for anybody that didn't pay their taxes in full after May 15th. So on May 16th, I write a, a warrant from Sarah Haskins Town Treasurer to Sarah Haskins Delinquent Tax Collector to allow myself to then proceed with the tax sale. So it happens on May 16th. So the reason I was asking that is because then for 90 days, I'm just looking at A and C. So we got 90 days from when the warrants were received and then the July 15th date. So what happens is, um, in the process, is taxes are due May 15th. On May 16th, uh, warrant is signed, interest and penalty are applied, and um, the first letter goes out around May 12th. Because we allow for um, U.S. postmarks, it take, there's about a week where we're still getting timely payments in. So I, I wait a few days, do not waste the um, postage of sending letters when it's crossed in the mail. So around May 20th, I send out the first letter. Then around June um, June 15th, anything is not paid gets interest. So around June 20th, I send the second letter. And then um, July 15th, there's more interest, and then anything not paid after that around um, July 20th, I send out a certified mailing letter saying um, this is the third chance, 
this is the last time you'll be hearing from me as delinquent tax collector. And then after that, I bring um, the list to you typically at the meeting after August 15th. You had a great explanation when we had uh, the BCA meeting about the people are really getting notice that their first their payments are due at like November. And they have from November until 15th of May to, to pay their tax bill in any way, shape, or form that they can. So it was very informative when you said that, that people continue to want a grace period after May 15th when they've had a grace period since November 15th. So we're actually getting ready to print the tax bills next week if all goes right. So, but you know, people will get their tax bills by September 20th. And so we take, uh, we take payments. We have a few people that pay us weekly. We can take monthly payments. We can take, so as long as you've made that first installment um, payment by November 15th, there's no interest in then the next one by May 15th. But um, I have a lot of people that um, pay in portions. Thank you for that. I just asked that because July 15th was falling in that 90 day window. And I yeah. just didn't know how that works. Yeah. So the July 15th is just because that's when I'm going to post the interest, but I really um, don't do it till August 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Next, to discuss delinquent taxes. Once you hand it out. Yeah, yes. Um, so that I just left on your desk because I wanted, or the table because I wanted it to be the most up to date. Um, that's as of four o'clock this afternoon. Um, so the process has been, since Jim Barlow's been our tax sale attorney the past couple of years, is um, after that August 15th, after I've sent my three lettuce, uh, notices, we have been hiring him to write a, an official demand letter. They cost us $75 a letter um, to hire him to do that. Um, but usually a letter from attorney seems to weigh more than a letter from the delinquent tax collector. Um, if it goes up for tax sale in the end, um, we can recoup that $75 fee. If they pay up, we don't recoup that $75 fee, but um, if they owe more than that, it's often worth it. Yeah, if it gets them to pay it, mm -hmm. it's worth it. <coughs> so did you want us to discuss any of these on here? Well, um, I can tell you what you've done in the past two years is you've um, just had him send anybody that was $75 or more. Yeah. Um, my recommendation, if you're going to continue that, is to raise it to $80. There's three business personal properties. We yeah. no longer are taxing on them. I, um, there's one for $78. I don't think it's worth spending $75 to collect $78. Right. I think um, I should continue mm -hmm. to bug these business Who's personal that? Batland too. Batland. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I do not recommend in spending more than you, than is owed. Right. So we would just take out anything under eighty. 80. Yep. That sounds good. What are the? Um, there's a few highlighted bits. Yes. So that. So the three that are highlighted mm -hmm. are. They sold at tax sale last year. Okay. So they in January for last year's taxes. Okay. They're in redemption. They have till January to pay. Okay. Um, I have to um, confirm with Jim Barlow because um, last year there weren't any. So I don't know if you can take somebody to tax sale if they haven't paid up. In the past, everybody's typically paid up and before the next one. Okay, so do you want us to change it to eighty dollars? Is that you're suggesting? That. Yeah, I have a motion here, Bob. Okay, go so for it. I make a motion we authorize the delinquent tax collector to engage in services with Attorney Jim Barlow to issue demand letters for all property owners that are in arrears of eighty dollars or more. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? 
Second. Second by Brian. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. And I will let you know that there is one property that's not on the list that I removed because they, um, I've told a couple times about the VHAP program where there's the money out there. So they have submitted an application. They're waiting to hear back. I, I can't put them up to tax sale till they um, get a decision. So I may come back with another property um, and, or they may um, get the funding, the grant from the state. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now you're also to approve the financing for the bubble alert. Yes, yeah, so I'm taking off delinquent tax collection, okay. putting on treasurer hat. Okay. Um, I sent out four bids for the uh, 2022 Volvo wheel loader. Yep. I received two back. One from the Union Bank at an interest rate of three point. 59% and one from Community National Bank at 3.75%. I would recommend that we go with the Union Bank. That's the lower interest rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. I yep. would make a motion to accept the Union Bank's bid for financing of 2022 Volvo L60H wheel loader at a rate of 3.59% for five years. Do you want to say the amount too? For an amount of? 85900 Yes. Yes. 85,900, thank you. Yeah. I have a motion by Don, is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. But and I think previously you asked, what is this, what is that? What's, what's that? What's a wheel loader? That is not bucket a fair question. <laughs> it's a bucket loader. It's a bucket loader. Okay. Bucket loader. Right, they call them wheel loaders, right. bucket loaders. Right, Kevin? Same, same piece of equipment. Okay, the other one, Sarah. Yep. Paving. So I also went out to bid for the $500,000 um, uh, paving for the various paving projects. Again, I sent out four bids. I only got two back. One from the Union Bank at 3.59%, one from Community National Bank, 3.75%, the same as the wheel loader. I, again, would recommend going with the Union Bank at the lower interest rate. Mm -hmm. You have a motion, Don? I make a motion to accept the Union Bank's bid for financing of 2022 <laughs> paving at a rate of 3.59% for five years at $500,000. I have a motion by Don, do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? You know what, what paving this is going to be? You know, we talk a lot about paving. This yeah, I was just talking to Kevin about that. You want to recap that, Kevin? Sure. Um, so we're talking about the paving on Garfield Road, okay. and on Stagecoach Road, and on Randolph Road. Okay. For the All right, thank you. And that's happening soon. Right like now. they're reclaiming. Sure. They're going to start reclaiming on Friday. And then okay. next week. Thanks, Kevin. All right, any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. So I'll just email you what I have um, to sign. The, the paperwork to sign. Yeah, thanks for your help, Sarah. Next, select an approved bid for fuel and propane. I know. Uh, yeah, good. Paula did all the work on this, but right. Um, I talked to Eric about it too. Really. Yeah. So we always go out to bid every year for fuel and propane. Um, we, we're hoping sometime we can get to the point where we can do more than a one-year contract because it's a lot of work to keep going out to bid. But because of the way things are right now, that's not really a possibility. So uh, we did go out to bid, and we didn't get a ton of responses. You have um, all the people there, mm -hmm. and um, just. Uh, I know that Eric has spoken with you about uh, the actual price per gallon not being the only factor to take into consideration. Service is a huge thing, so that is definitely something that you want to consider when you're um, when you're deciding to go who, who to go with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, do, do you want me to recap on the tanks at all? Okay, I think that'd yeah. be good. So yeah. Yeah. we have. Um, 
we have uh, been customers with Borns for very many years with the propane, a long, long time. Um, and last year, Fred's won the bid for the propane, so they went to test all the tanks because that's their protocol. And in doing so, they found out that three of the tanks were dangerous and should have been replaced quite a while ago and they would not put fuel into them. And so we ended up having to dig up three underground tanks, replacing the tanks in order to get fuel into them. Um, we also had some concerns with the library's boiler. Um, apparently when it was inspected by Fred's, it was determined to be very dangerous, which we were unaware of. Um, so they actually had to have a brand new boiler put in on an emergency basis because the service wasn't done the way it should have been on that boiler as well. So just so you're aware that those are some things that have happened in the past. Thank, Thank you. you, Tina. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> so what do you guys want to do? Okay. So um, I had a short conversation with Eric about this. And so did that. Right, and I can echo what Tina just said. So part, so I guess Tina, is it is it important for us to take action tonight? Well, it is because we told people that the, the contracts start on, on, on September 1st, or October 1st. Right. So if there is switching of tanks or what have you, we've got to get on that sooner rather than later. So it would be a good idea if we can make a decision tonight. Because it sounds like we, the reason I'm asking that is I'm just wondering if Eric needs to be here, but I think you've said everything that Eric would have said anyways. Mm -hmm. um, he did that. There he is did that so we speak to the, the team. Mm -hmm. Right. He actually encouraged us to sort of step in and cover those bases for him in his absence. That's what he kind of suggested to me last week too. Because right. it sounds like we might be going for the higher price, but <coughs> if that's... The case, I mean, I, I think I've got enough to go for the higher yeah. price. It's a tough one. You know, I've, I have quite a bit of experience dealing with it with, uh, with the town from years past and from Concept 2 and from my house. And I've had the opposite happen, happen where I switched to Borns and they discovered some dangerous situations in my house with my furnace and my tanks and my regulators. And they got all switched out and made them safe. Same thing at Concept 2, we had another provider they it's a it's not a game but it's like they that's protocol when you switch companies they inspect everything and if something's out of spec they say you've got to change it before we take it over sometimes they switch tanks sometimes they don't but i i have a tendency to give people more leeway i know there was an issue back with the library furnace um but i also know that that kind of thing happened back and forth you know um, i think as a whole borns has been very good but I'm just not ready to make a leap because of what I hear about that. You understand what I'm saying? It's like I've, I've heard it the other way around. So, and the other way, not in favor of Fred. So that's why I'm kind of weighing it back and forth and just letting you folks know that, um, you know, I'm not so sure it's not smart to go with the lower price. If we, um, if we go for the lower price, does that mean we have to get everything switched back to are we currently with Fred's? No, they do an inventory swap, as I understand. You, okay. You won't yeah. have to switch out the tanks again. Okay. It's a lot of work. So yeah. yeah. They'll just work together, Fred's. Right, Fred's okay. Form. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they do, they get they get a little snippy sometimes and won't use the same tank. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do, sometimes mm -hmm. they don't. Sometimes they, you know, it, it's, I don't want to say game, but it is kind of a, it's a, it's a sales thing almost. I mean, you want your equipment to be great, but through any provider. So that's my two cents in the whole thing. That's why I'm not so eager to jump on Fred's, although, uh, you know, I say that, but there's not a huge difference. We're talking about, right. you know, 19 cents, 19 cents difference. Do we, have a, do we have an esti estimation for how much that 19 cents would end up costing? Like, that's a good question. How many gallons do we use? When we send out the bids, they're based on the two-year average. Yeah. Um, so they are given in the bid proposal. They're given uh -huh. the gallons for the October 1st through September 30th uh -huh. um, time period. Um, if we go over that, then they have the opportunity to charge us at the higher rate. So mm -hmm. it ends up, I mean, most of the time it works out well because we end up giving a higher gallons than the 
to your average just to be a little safer. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not much when you look at that. So what we were looking at for an entire year, it's not much. It's much of a savings. Right, right. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So I'll say too, I want to say, um, I think there's another one here that didn't give you a bid that we used to get the fuel from that never did any service, right? Right. He Brosso. just delivered fuel. Are you talking about Brasso's? Yeah. Brasso's did do service many times and they actually are very good, but they wouldn't give a bid this time. Because so they, they, they changed tanks and things? They sent the letter. Yeah, they sent a the letter saying they'd love to give a bid, but they didn't quite dare because the market is so volatile. So right. they opted not to this year. I didn't think they changed tanks and things like that. They did. Oh, Brasso's is, is he <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're oil, so they don't have to change tanks. Right. It's only the propane. Well, I think yeah, they don't do propane. Thing. I was right. going to say, if they're leaking, they're leaking, whether it's propane or fuel. Right. Rosso only does oil service. Yeah. yeah. But so, he didn't bid in with. I just say that I agree with Bob that I don't know if bidding, going with a higher bid is going to really amount to a lot because uh, either way, I've always been choose to go to the lower if we can, because that's what we go out to bid for. Uh, it's nothing, if it was their service was included in that, it would be different, but it's just the price for fuel, so. That's yeah. why we wrote two motions there, so that yeah. the final day could have that conversation. And well, thank you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just so that you know, it's not just the price of the fuel, because whoever you decide to go with for a company will service our boilers, furnaces, whatnot. So you're really voting on what you want to pay for fuel, but you're also agreeing to a service contract as well. Right. Yes. Exactly. And it, well, it sounds to me that Eric's recommendation is that we go with threads. Is that right? Yes. I think yeah. And that's but based on his experience this he's year. He's kind of sour before yeah. But I, I don't feel that way. I mean, mm. I ran out of propane. It wasn't my fault, but I ran out of propane a couple years ago. And you know who came on Sunday and filled it up? Peter Bourne. You know, and I was impressed. He came on Sunday. So I have, I have no skin in the game other than that. So, yeah, I'm just torn. I mean, yeah. the, the price difference is, is there. What we do, our town administrator seems pretty, I'm not sure. Adam is the right word, but his recommendation right. is to go with threads. Yeah, he was pretty upset when we, the whole library debacle happened, and, um, and and it was a dangerous situation, or or certainly Fred's told us it was, um, you know. So I'm I'm fine. Whatever you folks want to want to decide on, it's a I knew it was going to be a tough one, but anybody can have you know inexperienced techs, you know, or and because of that, that's what led to that issue. So this goes back to my original question. Do we table this and wait for the next select board meeting when Eric's here so we can have a more thorough conversation or is that too late? Uh, if you want to do that, I will send out a letter yeah. to the two suppliers that provided a bid. And just because the letter that did go out asking the bid um, passed or indicated that we would be making a decision this evening. So I would just send that out a letter I think we're still going to be faced to make a decision when it's now in two weeks. Yeah. Eric, Eric told me, he said, it's up to you folks to really what you guys want to do. Paul, you don't have that dollar amount, like, do you? How, or like the gallons that we use yeah, for you? Um, yeah. Off the top of my head, I believe we asked, the, I, I can look at it. I have the information, it's just in the file. I think you just have to remember, it's sort of the scenario with a doctor. You're going to have one patient that likes this doctor and one that doesn't. So mm -hmm. when you hear the stories that you're referring to, Bob, mm -hmm. one fuel provider you're going to like, and the next person's not going to like. Them. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I want to say something about that. It's not that I don't like either one of them. But I like them both the same. But when you go out to bid, you go out to bid to get a low bid. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get the low bid. Usually, unless it's a real good reason, you don't. You take the low bid. Well, and it's do we want to give Borns another chance with their service that they've handled, you know, and, and um, I'm inclined to do so. I guess for me, because it's fuel and it's it is potentially dangerous, and there was a 
potentially dangerous situation at the library. I, um, I'm, I'm leaning towards going with Eric's recommendation and switching over to Fred's. I'm taking that on the, the, um, on his recommendation. That's that's how that's where I'm leaning. We are currently with Fred's now. Oh, we are currently. So not changing it. Yeah. I'll also mention that we have a, a heating oil bit and a propane right. bit. So yes. Yeah, separate. Oil. We have the same issue with both. Oh, we right. do. Yeah. Do with even one, less of a one difference. On one and one on the other. Well, with even less of a difference in price. No, it's similar. Is it similar? Both of them are. Oh, right. Yeah. For now. Yeah. 19 cents. Not much. 11. Yeah. 19 and 12, yeah. 12 cents. Yeah. Yeah, per gallon. For propane, it's. Depends on the difference. Yeah, for propane, right. Borns is a dollar seventy nine a gallon. Borns is dollar seventy nine a gallon for propane, and Fred's is a dollar ninety one. And for oil, it's um, Borns is four oh nine a gallon, and Fred's is four twenty eight a gallon. Um, I'm inclined to stay. I, I decide with Brian. It's, we do the bids for a reason. We try to get three in every case, but we don't always get three. But the idea is to go through the local provider and a provider who's got the lowest rate. So on the fuel oil, it would be $2,090 and on the propane it would be $1,342 is the difference. Okay. But that is us going high to higher, higher gallons. So I'm sorry, I missed that. That's okay. So $2,090. So that would be the difference if we went with Fred's. That would be the additional cost. Yes. Okay. okay. Overestimated it. Yeah. Do I hear a motion? I'm going to suggest before the motion that we split the difference between these two companies. One for propane, one for oil. Yep. And since the bigger savings is with oil. Let's go. So I make the motion that we accept. Uh, what I got right here. I would move that we accept the bid from Bourne's Energy to supply the town's heating fuel oil for four dollars and nine cents per gallon from October first, twenty-two, to September thirtieth, twenty-three. Okay. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there further discussion on this motion? Yeah, I'll just say before we vote, I'm planning on voting for Fred's on the propane. On the propane. Uh, yes, that's correct, yeah. Okay. All in favor in this motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Ayes have it. Borns have it for oil. For only a gallon. Three to two. So do I have a motion on propane? I make the motion we accept the bid from Fred's to supply the town's propane for $1.91 per gallon from October 1st to September 30th, 23. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Jess. Any further discussion on this motion? I say Fred's. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Next, 14, review bids for Duhamel Pit Reclaiming Project. So we have two bids, correct? Yes. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, so we've got two bids, one from um, Loco and one from Person. Did you send out any others? Or? I've sent out four different ones, one for the Walker, one for Takeo. And, and they didn't um, answer. Neither one of those replied. It's, you see versus is, is a lot less. Yeah. Um, and I actually approached Chip about that and talked to him more about that to make sure that we were understanding what needed to be done. And he stated that he doesn't believe he needs to make all the money off of this town. This town is his words. And that he said a week. He says it won't take him two weeks. He said, I he assume that's why we asked for the hourly rate. That is, if it went over by one or two days, 
you can also see what the bid would be. Um, and the other company, of course, Little Cody came in at two to three weeks. Yeah. Like a lot of eight. Right. So, Dan, the, the Percy's is um, $7,500 plus $450. Which is moving the piece. Correct. Right, yeah. for to move the equipment. equipment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then this is just per hour, but no estimate on how long it would take for the <coughs> little coding. Two to three weeks. So two oh, to three, three weeks. weeks. But how I don't many know. hours is that? I don't know. Is that for all three equipment? Yeah. Uh, if you figure in all three pieces of equipment, it's about $84,000. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say that's all that's three. A big difference. Say that again, Brian. Right? Uh, yeah. Ke yeah. Kevin, $84,000? Yeah. $84,000. Yeah, that's that's why I added up. That's ten times more. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just couldn't make sense. Oh, I, I had all kinds it's of correct. questions for you here, but I think you've answered them. Uh, yeah, it just seemed like it was way out. Of my field. Well, and I know Chip is also experienced in doing this sort of work too. So correct. Well, Chip with his training. Who is who's more experienced? Chip Percy. Percy. Oh, Percy. Percy. So I had some questions about it because I wasn't sure these two both have experience in this. Literally. And I'm thinking one's got two to three weeks and one's got 40 to 50 hours. So I wanted to make sure if there's a way we can make sure that we don't pay him the 150 for three weeks. Correct. Uh, he, he swore that it would not really take two weeks. Yeah, we could put it in the contract, right? Something. Yeah. I mean, even if it went to 60 hours, that's still right. a lot cheaper, even a little right. bit more. But I don't want to all of a sudden him come back for the three weeks it took him. You got the bid because he bid it lower. Right. Okay. The one um, on Blue and Cody does have the oh, exclude. Yeah. Never mind. I I mean I feel like um, I I don't understand what the scope of each covers because I haven't seen. A plan for the reclamation? Right. Well, I these mean, guys know, yeah, it's more detailed than you're going to see on paper like that. Well, we're, I, I don't feel comfortable approving something until I see what the actual scope of the project is. Um, I understand that we're required to to reclaim the pit, and I'm, um, I just, I'd like to know what that looks like because it's, there's a lot of great potential in terms of um, making it fit for recreation again, making it fit for, and making it safe. Um, you know, like I take my three year old daughter up there, where it's just gonna, you know. I mean, I, all I can say yeah. is that our permit says we need to slow up two more. Yeah. The place, the back side of the pit, if you've been up there, you've been in our pit. Uh, so well, not in the pit, but I, yeah, I, I recreate pit. there. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when you look past where the sand screen is now, that big bowl, yeah. well, that bowl is what's gonna get reclaimed. Okay. okay? And with the way that that's shaped and the way that everything is shaped above it, yeah. we should be more at about a five to one to a six to one slope. Uh -huh. So it won't be as steep in through that area. Right. right. Where do they get the material to reclaim it? Right out of the banks, right there. Mm -hmm. it's everything that was, if you look up into the, the behind the screens area off to the right hand side, that was all clay and gravel mixed. That came off of the left hand side it was pushed over there two years ago so two or three years ago now um so that we could get road sand up. so we're going to take that material and put it back into the holes on the other side and we slow that whole face it'll yeah. help to get a less grade more level right it would be less of a grade so they're going to reduce the grade i assume they're going to replace topsoil that's what we're talking about right we have a and huge gonna, topsoil pile on the boat and they're going to seed it no, we're seeding. We're seeding. Yep. We're Are going they, with our hydro seeder at Sea Area. And plantings, is plantings part of this or? Not right at this time, no. Okay. We have talked, Eric and I have talked about possibly planting trees later on. So this is a bid then to replace the topsoil? To Just do to the grade? To regrade the banks and replace topsoil at the top to get it ready for us to go in and hydro seed. Yeah, and then you can make it whatever you want in the future, but correct. this just gets it back covered up. To stop erosion, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, 
How do you folks want to go forward here? Looks like a no-brainer. Yeah. I just I'm so concerned about this wildly different di difference in price. I just it seems so bizarre to me. Like like how different is the work going to be? I mean, is it like if I got two quotes like this on for my house, I'd be like, well, what are you doing that the other guy's not doing? Like, are you like taking all the construction to, you know, like I would, there's, I have more questions about why Percy's is so cheap. I just, I'm, I'm, I wanted to, it's an important public resource um, for our residents. You know, it's a public piece of land that people enjoy. I just, if we're going to spend the money, I just want to make sure we understand what they're doing. So you're feeling confident, Kevin. Well, I, mean, he, I talked to Chip and he assured me that that's, he understood what needed to be done up in there and that's what he was going to get done for us. He, he said between, said the very most would be more, no more than eight days. I assume you spoke to Mim as well? Mim Mark. Cody? Mark. 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 Yeah, it looks like Mim, but it's Mark. Yeah. Okay. I assume you spoke to Mark as well. Yep. We had site visit. I had site visit for both of them. And they both had the same. They both had the same understanding of what needed to be done. Yeah. Did you have a comment, Sharon? Yeah, can you just repeat the the, the two numbers again, please? Sure. Seven thousand nine hundred fifty dollars compared to eighty-four thousand. Okay. Yeah, like, okay. it's like ours and this one. Right. <laughs> and this was just proposed to happen when just, when just one. End of the month. End of the month. How do you folks want to go forward with this? You don't have enough data to be able to vote on this? I'm going to trust that Kevin's done the due diligence that needs to be yeah. done. That's what I, I say. Kevin's been there. He showed it to both of them. Yeah. Um, I don't think the pile is, is the pile, no matter if they're both doing the same job, supposedly. Whether you want trees planted or something done later, that's something we're all, neither one of them are going to do. No. It's something we can do later. Correct. So, I mean, the same job is the job. <laughs> Well, that's my question. Is it, like, yeah, are there like where are the like I don't just like where are the plans for? I, I'm not questioning you, Kevin. Well, I'm no, just it, you know. Well, Cody said I can't say that they're going to have all three of those pieces of equipment right. working that whole time. Right. Yeah. I can assume they're going to, but they're fit. Right. He didn't break that out either, okay. saying that there was only going to be so many hours for the loader or so many hours for yeah. the dozer. It was just a lump in there. So that's yes. all I can go by as well. But even if he had only one of them there, it's, it's per hour is a lot more than what the other one is. Right. So either way, it's cheaper. And yeah. then what is the, um, like, what is the protocol to um, to mitigate erosion and that kind of thing? Is that, does the town have to, do you all have to go in there and put up the salt fences and do all that? Or is that the responsibility of the operator? Or? Well, with the, the two to one grade, once it's yeah. in there, we put on the um, high Yeah. That's no, I mean, grade. I mean, like while the project's going on. That's there. No. That's there. Okay. Yep. That's that. Right. So and hopefully, if we don't, as long as we don't get a huge major rainstorm, we should have an issue. Okay. So based on your experience, you recommend Percy's. Percy's. Correct. So, but does that include all of the silt, the um, the silt fences and? That would be back on us, not that. Oh, that's back that's on it. us. Correct, that would be needed. Okay. Well, that's where we have to add needed caution. If they start the project and we start to take a, like, they predict a bunch of rain, mm. we would put the cell phone. I mean, Run. okay. I mean, it's a pretty big area. So it's, there's just, it's a beautiful brook and it's full of, Beautiful fish that right down from there, and there's the water can't get to it. We're yeah. all safe, so right. in the right? I think you're trying to beautify the whole pit. We're just talking about covering the reclaiming the area. Well, I, I mean, going. I want to make sure if the town's spending money that we're spending money in the right way, you know, that we're not going back in and redoing it. Um, 
and I know it's it's an important resource for many many people in this town. People have moved here because of the common town land that they enjoy. Um, so, does someone want to make a motion on this? I make a motion we build the Dale Percy bid for reclaiming the Morris Town uh, Three Helmel Pit. And if you need a, um, an amount, as presented. As presented. As presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there further discussion? Yeah, so similar, I do have a question, and I guess it's for Kevin. So similar to the whole Fred's and Boris thing that we talked about before, if we were to table this, or if we were to vote, take no action tonight, these two weeks, does that put the project in peril, or it can still be well, done this fall? Before we get into the fall, the lush farm will have to actually complete things. I'm thinking two Being weeks. Like it's shorter, right. gradual yeah. grow, yeah. Um, spring runoff will happen, more so, mm -hmm. so we can get it done and get it see the better the right. spring will be. Yeah. All right. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion is passed four to one. Thanks, Kevin. Next we have Old business. We have any old business? Yes, no. Approve the warrants. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to approve the warrants? Make Second. a motion to approve them. Second. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have approved the warrants unanimously. TA report, we don't have anything for that, do we, Judy? I can speak to on Eric's behalf. Go ahead. Uh, with him out. Um, so, uh, the last few weeks, Eric did a press release letting the community know that the Garfield Road, um, that they were doing the work that Kevin spoke of earlier on the Garfield Road. And uh, paving begins tomorrow by Pike Industries. Um, they're going to start at Stagecoach Road and Morristown, to Morristown Corners, um, north to Katie's Falls. Once done, they're going to move to, I think it's Randolph Road next. Uh, yes. and then begin doing Garfield Road. Um, we had a new phone system, new phones put in uh, over the last few weeks. So there's new desk phones uh, that's saving the town money every month with this new system. It's voice over IP. Um, so we're all learning how to use our new phones. Uh, and then uh, Eric signed up, I believe, about three or four of us for the VLCT Town Fair. So that is Killington Grand Resort, October 6th and 7th. Um, so Eric and I believe Kevin, are you gonna go as well? Yeah, and Paula and I will <coughs> go and attend different workshops over various, uh, over the course of the two days, over various events. Um, so that's what we had for the TA report. Thank you. You're welcome. Eric also asked me to attend Friday a cannabis control for oh, yeah, that's right. Because he's not able to attend, so I'm going to go on his behalf. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, Judy. I wanted to ask welcome. Sarah a question about the cannabis. So that we're, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're handling it as we have the control. That's, I think that's how we're going to go forward, maybe. I, that's my understanding, but I really, it's, um, I don't know a lot because Eric's been taking the lead on okay. it. And even this that I'm going to, I saw the list, it was like select board time ministry or I think police, it had nothing to do with the clerk going to it, but I'm, I'm going to go and learn. You need to teach all of us. Try. Yeah, I had spoken to Bill Scott about it a little bit, and he didn't know how it was going to all happen yet. So, I don't think we know how things are going to be done yet. My understanding from the summer workshop that Eric had sent a video of to us was that it was going to be different from the liquor control in the sense that the state was going to give out the permits for retail, manufacturing, 
and growing. Mm -hmm. And then let us know as those permits come in. But of course that was several months ago. So in that regard, it might be a little bit different. Well, the state gives out liquor license also, but yeah, you approve it. Right. Locally. Yeah. Yes. And do you know about the new liquor program? Have I told you that? No. No. Sorry. It's probably not the appropriate time, but there's a whole, the DLC just came out with, I did a training like two weeks ago. Jason, you probably want to know too. Um, it's all computerized now. When people renew their license or apply for these event permits, it's all online. Um, so I will come to you and um, get your blessing still, but um, applicants do everything online. They even pay the DLC online. I'm no longer signing stuff and mailing. The state will, um, thinking email or, or um, they'll go onto their portal and they'll download their signed license. We're gonna get another training um, next week, two weeks, in two weeks at our annual conference. So does it take anything off? our plate and we don't have to do anything anyhow no i think it's instead of me um having a whole file with paper and people coming into the office to hand it in um they're gonna do everything online and i have to go online i'll get an email saying that an application has been submitted and i'm clicking buttons but they still have to pay us with a paper check so I don't know. They're still developing it. I think it's supposed to speed things on the state's level, but I don't think it'll really change the process for you guys. Okay. Just for me. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Next, select board concerns. Don. A couple of things. Um, so first of all, I want to thank Todd and the Planning Council for a potential solution, I think, to the Brooklyn Street issues, the high density mm -hmm. um, district in taking, I believe it's the Wickart proper, property and combining with downtown and then um, not making the, the rest of the western side of Brooklyn Street high density. That seems to be something that's being discussed anyways right now. and. Uh, um, it seems like a possible solution to that. Second, uh, in regards to the Duhamel pit, I am concerned that we don't have a permit yet. Um, we own a valuable piece of property there. We have valuable resources in there and we're still not able to get it. I know the town and Eric and everyone else working in this building have been working hard with, their, with our lawyers to try and get those permits. Uh, in place so that we can get some gravel and some sand for this winter and not have to buy it from from private uh, private entities which is going to cost us a lot more money having said that I'm also very interested in this reclamation and I guess I ended up voting in the end for Percy's just to get this done to get the reclamation process started and get going on it but I do want to throw out there that I am interested in some recreational opportunities in that area as well for the town in the future. So whatever reclamation we do do there in the long term, that we're, uh, that we're, that we're providing some, some opportunities, some recreational opportunities for, for the people in this town and for people outside the town that come here to recreate. We have lots of people coming to Morrisville right now to recreate in that area. I know they're, they're coming in here. They're coming from all over the county and all around the neighboring counties. They're riding their bikes right by my house on a regular basis. There's a huge, huge amount of traffic there. So I just want to say that. And uh, I've been talking to Kevin a little bit about going out there and doing a visit, and getting more familiar with that area. I also want to say I'm still a little concerned about the planning council meetings and where they're being held and how they're being held. I think we have a very nice facility right here that we're in and I would uh, uh, I couldn't make the uh, last meeting I planned to go but I had an extremely good friend who lost his wife just a couple of days before I couldn't go um, many of you know this individual and but I, I do plan to go to the next meeting and and uh, just 
you know, I, I'm, I'm just curious as to why we're still meeting at the Copley Country Club and, and why we're not meeting here and taking advantage of the technology and taking advantage of lights and sound and, and so on. So I, those are my concerns. Thank you, Tom. Judy? Um, just want to piggyback on what you're saying is that you know, the, when the meetings revert back to the planning council, there isn't anybody to run the, uh, the Zoom. So that's not happening right now. It's a matter of hiring somebody. So <coughs> that's one of the issues. Um, I have no other concerns. Thanks. And on that issue, Bob, if I can just jump in. I have been doing a little bit of talking around this office, trying to find out if I could find someone to do that. Um, so I know I talked, talked, spoke to Sarah about it. So if we could get somebody. Don't look at me. You mean hiring somebody? I'm looking at you, Sarah Martin. Okay, hey, Jess. Oh, wait. Judy's. Are you still going? Judy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, uh, thanks. I also, um, so I have a few things and a few of them are based on um, some, some emails that I, I've gotten over the last couple of weeks. Um, one is the like very consistent concern about the planning council where their meetings are held. Um, the fact that um, the, the, some people feel that the minutes aren't as accurate of a reflection of the meetings as they could be, um, even like regardless of the um, the truth to all that, because I haven't been to meetings, like I, I trust what people are telling me on email. Regardless of that, I think it's our, um, it's our obligation to provide um, a very clear way for people to hear and, um, and watch again or participate in those planning council meetings. I think it opens up, us up for um, a lot of concern and controversy if we don't. Um, I, I get why um, the meetings may be held at the country club. It's nice up there. Like people work inside all week. Um, I understand that during COVID there were concerns around um, safety and wanting to have meetings outside. I'm not um, trying to cast dispersions on anyone. I just, um, I, I question too, like, how hard is it to operate the Zoom? Um, I, you know, I, I don't mean to sound um, rude. I just, um, I think we need to find a solution to it. And I don't, I think we just need to set a timeline for when we'll find that solution. Um, and again, I'm, I'm leaning towards the, um, we just need to put the planning council meetings on Zoom and they need to be held here. That's, um, I don't know. Um, what authority we have with that and how well that will be received. Um, I, um, I had a request from someone um, wondering um, if we could share with um, the community um, in, um, an image or a sketch about um, what we're envisioning for the, um, the new, or the, um, the vacant lot um, at the Four Corners. Um, I'm not sure if um, Todd has um, just a sketch of that. I believe he might. Um, so people from the last meeting were just saying that they wish that they could have um, seen uh, what we were talking about, like have a visual for um, what that rearrangement of the four corners would look like. Um, and then there's, I've also um, received some questions and I have questions too. Um, I'm just always looking at, you know, solutions, right? So we still don't have a permit at Duhamel Pit. We may be looking um, at purchasing gravel again. Um, what are our other options? Like, like this is a bad situation for the town to be in, um, spending so much money on um, purchasing gravel from other entities is, do we have any resources? I'm sure as the select board, you know, you've already, um, <coughs> already looked at this because this has been an ongoing issue getting the permit for the Duhamel pit, but are there any other resources that we already own that we can tap into? Um, and um, if not, are there any other town properties? I, um, I just, um, and then again, is there, um, has there been any um, assessment of the cost 
of the um, the permitting, um, the permitting process, the legal fees, the um, and all of the whole cost of like the the present Duhamel pit um, situation where we still don't have a permit um, versus um, purchasing. Um, a different piece of property that doesn't have issues or I'm just thinking I'm just having a lot of thoughts about this or um, are there other options around um, you know are we looking at other are we looking for bids for gravel like if, if the permit doesn't come through um, so those are um, big questions um, again a lot of questions raised from community members um, that I'm voicing because I represent them um, and um, my last question is just about um, the also do Hamel pit related. Um, if we're going to do um, seating in the pit, um, I would be interested in the least to talk to the Morris Town Conservation or MCC and um, also there's some residents um, of the, um, the community there on 10 Benz Road that have been really involved with in, um, environmental conservation. Um, if we're doing the seeding ourselves, like can we just seed with native grass seeds and you know a mix of seeds so that we're not doing like one big monoculture um, planting there? Um, because I know um, from spending so much time in those fields that um, there is a huge diversity of um, plants and there's all kinds of milkweed and crickets and. Um, you know, it may not be like maybe a small detail, but I think that could be a small thing that we could do to um, improve the area and it probably wouldn't cost a whole lot more just um, looking into um, different kind of conservation bundles, packets that we could use for the seed. It is what we need. Okay. 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 And it, okay. Great. Awesome. I should ask that question to you just personally. Thank you, Kevin. Um, that's all I got. Okay. Thanks, Jess. Brian. Well, I have not too many, but the uh, Duhamel pit does bother me. I wish that we could get gravel. I'm under this understanding. I don't know of any place in Morrisville where we're going to find another place. We bought that one, but no, <coughs> we didn't have any problems. And I, I think this last episode is kind of a something's gone wrong in Montpelier because we should have had it by now. We shouldn't be fighting this in Mount Pay. Um, I think it's a good asset for gravel. That's what we bought it for. Um, I guess that's probably all I want to say. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. <clears throat> and I'm also okay. I, I do want to let folks know I'm not going to be at the next meeting because I'm going to be over in Europe. So if you could leave the meeting, that'd be great. Like <laughs> I'm sure you'll do just fine. But I apologize in advance for being gone, going to the World Rowing Championships. <clears throat> All right, next, community concerns. We have community concerns tonight. Jamie? Something I made mean, after uh, watching the last select board meeting, and I know there's been a lot of comments about doing the handle pit and you'll sort of hear a little bit about that in here but uh in recent months members of the select board have stated how oh, again my name is james Brewster. Uh, in recent months members of the select board have stated how important it is for citizens to attend the meetings of local boards and commissions citizen involvement in local government is crucial in order for the best decisions to be made at the last select board meeting a comment was made regarding citizens that participated in the do handle Property Act 250 permit process. Unspecified members of the Morristown community were said to have attempted to sabotage the permitting process. A listener could have easily taken away from these comments that the unspecified citizens caused a delay in the permit process, resulting in the need for the town to purchase unbudgeted gravel. This just isn't true. As a Morristown resident who participated in this Act 250 permit process, I believe it's important to present the public with some basic facts. The application was submitted on January 6th of 2020. That was over two and a half years ago. It's an awful long time. Uh, the currently permitted gravel pit on the Duhamel property has been depleted since the permit application was submitted. Morristown has to purchase gravel to meet its needs. 
The community participants involved in the permit process met all deadlines set forth by the District 5 Environmental Commission. However, by contrast, on four separate occasions, representatives working for Morristown on the Act 250 permit application requested and received extensions to deadlines set forth by the District 5 Environmental Commission. It's my opinion that the District 5 Environmental Commission has taken too long, like everyone here believes, to render a decision with no explanation as to the delay. In closing, I'd like to say how unfortunate it was that the involvement of local citizens was labeled sabotage simply because it didn't align with the views of some select board me members. In this instance, the word was an overly aggressive term used to describe the actions of constituents rightfully and respectfully representing opposing views. Words matter. My hope is that more care will be taken by this board when choosing them in the future, because when they aren't, citizens are less likely to become involved out of fear that they will be maligned for their views and participation. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Is there any other community concerns? Go ahead, Tom. My name is Tom Kluge, and I was glad to hear the comments about zooming. That's one of the things I want to uh, talk about a little bit is that uh, you see MOCA zooms they have board meetings. That if they can, and the, re the town around us zoom all their board meetings, We're, it's time for us to get the 21st century. Get the DRB here zoomed, and get the planning council here zoomed. And and uh, you, uh, uh, Mr. Kellogg, at last meeting said zoom doesn't really work all that well. I have spent today going back from the zoom to to 2018 every single select board meeting on zoom. You can go now to YouTube and watch those. I've watched them. Yeah. They're all there, they're working fantastic. That's that's about 100%. So Zoom it's does not, work. It's not 100% because I know one night we sat here making decisions where two they're, people call, trying to call in they, and they didn't come. So it doesn't work Zoom. 100%. That, that was me in that, Costa Rica. I yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is Wi-Fi. <laughs> that was, not glitches. I'm not going to argue. There are glitches, but it's usually Wi-Fi. It's not Zoom. The Zoom. It, all they do is stream it to YouTube. T tomorrow, you can go watch this meeting. So Zoom works really well. All the way back, I don't even know if it goes beyond 2018, but every select board meeting, you can go view. And but that's Tom, what we should be doing with start. every single board meeting in this, in this town. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but sure. we have not Zoomed our meeting since 2018. We only started Zooming during the COVID. So what you're watching is probably Green Mountain TV. I, I, uh, I, I will send you the, the, I was watching 2018. I was sitting Zooms here in 2018 and we're not Zooming. We so. only started Zooming during COVID. <coughs> so you're saying that it was recorded. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. That's what it was. It used to be a camera sitting there. Well, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. that was, yeah. Right. All right, it's on YouTube. Yeah. We can go all the way back to 2000. Maybe before. You can go back way before that. Yeah, all right. And uh, another thing that bothered me today, uh, I was on YouTube looking at the uh, the, the uh, November of last year's planning meeting. And the first people that get up were complaining about not getting notices of meetings. It, that is it, frustrating for me because that's that was back in November. And then this week, I, I was looking for notices of this meeting. Not in the newspaper, not on front page four, nowhere could I find it because I didn't go to the office here, didn't go to the post office. It wasn't noticed anywhere. And there's there's 4,700 subscriptions to, face, face, to uh, front page four. Morrisville resident, over 4,700 of them. 3,600 newspapers from News and Citizen are dropped off at the library, I mean at the post office. No notice was in the newspaper. No notice except I was in front page four. 
I think we should be telling people when the meetings are. And it is 50-50. It's part of our job too. And part of us as citizens to let our neighbors know that the meetings are gonna occur to show up. And we're trying to do that. I hope I'm not keeping you from something this far. <laughs> no, I'm just getting a message from somebody that's watching this. Good. <laughs> Good. Anyway, anyway, that's can you give me an answer that we can not, notify in front page for in the papers when these meetings are gonna be held? The meetings are on the first and third Monday. We know Monday. that. We all right. the people know that, know that. There's a lot okay. of people that need to see that when the meetings are gonna occur. Can you Why can't you simply you? do that? Um so uh I post, as Tom mentioned, I post in the window in Todd's office. I post over at the post office. Water and Light post the agenda over at their building. Um, but the best resource is on the Morristown website. I took it an extra step uh, and I do post to the community calendar on the Morristown website and to the select board page on the website. Um, so it is all there as well. So you're going to really have to look for it. The average citizen out here is not going to be seeing these. I thought. I we mean, what's so difficult? I, I thought we did decide that we would post a front porch forum. I mean, I like. I guess I could do it. I mean, I thought that was a decision that we had made. No, I, I thought no. it was. No. Every year at town meeting, we usually decide the places we're going to post stuff, and I think we've gone beyond what we. I, we, I think I mean I think wait, that's. Wait, wait, how come there's so many people that don't know? Where we can't go door to door and wrap. No, 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 I think we're talking about posting more. a front porch forum. I mean, you can do more. Forty-seven hundred subscribers and front page forum. Maybe you get some more there. It's not costing you any more money. It right. doesn't cost anything to put it there. It doesn't cost it. Well, I don't know about the newspaper. You got, you got Facebook. You got a wonderful Facebook page. Why not put it in there? Because I don't think it'd be on Facebook. If you want to put it on There's Facebook, two thousand five hundred followers on Marsville Facebook. Yeah, I agree with you, Tom. I don't know why we're not posting on Facebook. I don't know why I'm not I thought we were posting on Facebook to do this. Then maybe, Don't you want the yeah. people informed? Yes. yes. I think maybe it was just a miscommunication because, from my, what I understand, is we were supposed to be posting this on front porch yeah. And, and we want that fishing to go where the fish are. Yeah. I, I, ah, I that's a good concept. <laughs> yeah. It is. They're not walking by the tides. So I can so walk fish, right in here. The fish aren't going that's, by that's there. They're so going on front page <laughs> four. Oh, I like Barry's comment. And, uh, and and how much does it cost to get somebody to run Zoom to have them on the meeting? I don't know, probably 25 bucks an hour, four hours a shot. It's not worth right that. It shouldn't cost anything. If people yeah. want it, then you'd think it'd be yeah. volunteers in this community. I volunteered 20 years on the fire department. I've done dog catching for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So. Somebody should come in here and learn how to do that if they want to do it. I think we decided we actually have to have a paid person yeah, from the town. Right. I think we Pay suggested on. that at, yeah. at a different point. We have to have a ton of money. You, you can always find excuses. Green Otherwise, Mountain. It's at least Mountain, you've, got, you've got to come to the 21st century and let people go and, and watch it on Zoom like every other town in this area does. There's also, I, as you're speaking, Tom, um, if I, if you don't mind, if I speak to this real quick, um, I'm, I'm realizing, I, and I, I can't believe I hadn't thought of this before. There are a few different options that would allow people to watch. One is just if we recorded it, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to zoom it. I mean, right. the, the ideal right. is that it's on Zoom, right? But then there is the option that it would just be recorded, and at least people would go back and watch it. And then another option would be like, so if it's recorded, maybe there is a way that a town employee takes the minutes from the recording. Those are just some ideas, and I am with you, and I did think what, that we were posting on Front Porch Forum. That may have been a difference that happened when we had a change of, um, of um, employees. That may, may, we just, that might have fallen through the cracks. 
But I agree with you. It should be at least put some front porch bar. It's 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 the if transparency. It's transparency. It's not about transparency. Well, in my book, it is. Maybe in your book, but it's got nothing to do with transparency. Okay. Uh, that's my view. That's my view. Does anyone else have any community concerns? Yeah, I just asked a question. Go ahead, Sharon. Sharon Rowell, how big an area is being reclaimed at Dunham? How many acres is that? What's the size of the, I, I don't even know. It's about two acres. Two acres, that. okay, thank you. I would be very much in support of what you just said, and I've thought a lot about it in regard to there are a lot of people out here that are tech savvy, not me. But there must be a volunteer that could become a likely paid volunteer to help out with this planning council issue. And I'd like to see them all back here because I left in anger from the country club the other night because we were having to use flashlights from our cell phones. Uncalled for. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Same electricity. So on, I'd like to say, I'd like to say a same on Jess's. I have a thought for years. We used to have a tape recorder set here that taped the meeting. It is. So everything you heard, heard was said. Somebody could then take minutes, make minutes from it. That could work. We also had a guy who stood there with a camera for years, taking video to the meetings. And then he'd put them on television. Maybe that guy would be doing it again. It's up there now. Yeah, we have a camera right now. I know it does, but that's a Zoom thing where you talk back oh, and forth. That's I'm actually on television. Yeah, I know. I watched it. But I'm saying that. <laughs> this is two. Yeah, it's two uh, things. Yeah. Yeah. That's on TV, actual recording of this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. It's one technology. Yeah. It's one technology. Yeah. Right. We don't need to take recordings because we have other ways to do that today. Well, they're not working, so let's even do the old ones. At least get the information so everybody can read it, hear it. All so right, is, is there any there, other business tonight? Is that something we can um, just put on the next agenda, the next select board agenda? Well, that's up to you folks. That's, okay. that's not me. <laughs> but, I'll, but I can write notes of what you want, Jess. Is there any other business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Now adjourn. Thank you folks for coming. Thanks for folks. Thank you. Thank you.